A man named Keeley, back in Pennsylvania, built a free energy motor and demonstrated it to the highest scientific minds in this country. Keeley was later, later died in an insane asylum. His motor disappeared. We had a man in 1929 on a Cleveland airport that had a section of one hangar rented there, and it was canvassed off so you couldn't see what was there. For over a year, that man worked behind the canvas. And as far as anybody on the airport went, we all figured he was a little off the beam because he never did anything when he'd say good morning or good night or how are you. The man's name was Henderson. One morning when I came to my job there at, Cle at the Cleveland Airport, I saw a, a Waco 10 airplane setting out on the line. The only difference in it and the other Waco 10s was the cowling was changed. This man Henderson came out and got in this airplane and flew it around the field. We didn't hear a sound from an engine. Everybody on the field rushed up to the ship after it landed. And he climbed out and permitted us to open the cowling and look in, into the cockpit, into any part of the airplane. There were no batteries in the airplane. There were no gas tanks in the airplane. There were two uh, devices under the cowling that looked like our electric motors, one of them end to end and connected by a shaft. I saw that myself. I saw it fly. The next day when I came to work, Henderson, the canvas, the airplane, and the whole work was gone. We never saw him again. We don't know where it went. Another man named Hendershow developed a motor. There have been half a dozen of these free energy devices developed to produce power. They work on the same principle as planet work on. In fact, these spaceships, the disks, are copied after planets. They use exactly the same principle in, in space relative to their travel that the planets use. We're sitting here right now on a spaceship that we call the Earth. It's traveling 1,000 miles an hour on its axis and 1,800 miles an hour in its orbit. And we are following the sun through space at over 12 miles a second. And yet we register no sign of movement and those three movements alone, not counting the motion in the galaxy. These motions are not felt because we are subject to the gravity of this body we're riding on. These people in copying the principle of planets and applying it to ships don't have to pay anybody for the power or put any fuel in the tanks any more than the Earth has to. Astronomy has had so many things refuted in the last five years that they have been put under secrecy because they don't want the public to find out that in the last five years they have upset the entire table of all the information that has been printed in regard to the stars and other planets and life on them. Science itself, if it produced a book every week, the book would be obsolete by the time the next one came out the next week because things are moving so rapidly. No man, no one individual can possibly understand the full concept of this picture. This is the greatest thing that has happened to this planet since the birth of Christ. The Ships themselves are coming from various places. They work in a large confederation. So they have 51 solar systems and 601 individual planets in this confederation, which they call the Atomic Confederation of Man. Our astronomers know today the moon is inhabited. They know Mars is inhabited. These are facts that you can find out if you can get on the inside of astronomy. Our astronomers have photographed any number of lights on the moon, changing lights, moving lights. In 1954, they photographed the first man-made structure they've ever pictured on the moon. Prior to that time, apparently it wasn't there. It was built suddenly and photographed over the Maracrisium crater, a hundred mile long man-made bridge from rim to rim of the equator. If astronomy won't reveal these things that are not security, Russia knows they're there. Every nation on the earth knows they're there. Their astronomers know they're there. It is not something that should be hidden from the people because the uh, proof that life exists elsewhere is only another manifestation that there is a creative intelligence greater than man. It is the very verification that the Bible tries to teach us. These things being withheld are only evidence of a destructive element and uh, a force trying to keep the people in ignorance. Naturally, with the investigation under the military in the Air Force, the Air Force is not responsible to the public. They are not elected by the people. They're only responsible to the administration. 
Nevertheless, the administration knows the answers. Ike himself has talked to these people on these ships. Truman talked to these people. Yet the public was never told the facts. We know this happened because Ike was supposed to come up to our place to talk to us. We had had over three years' experience in the reception and transmission of thought messages. Our science today can photograph the thoughts of any individual they want to put before a machine. They don't look like thoughts, they look like flames. The fire represents the creative force or thought, and every thought, regardless of what it is, will register as a flame in this device. These spaceships vary in size depending <coughs> what they're used for. They said they had 369 varieties or sizes or types, just like we have kitty cars, scooters, bicycles, automobiles, trains, ships, and everything else. The scout ships that have been mostly observed around our surface have been photographed any number of times. One ship in particular, the Venusian uh, Bellcraft, which is uh, a scout ship that normally carries four people, has been photographed in Venezuela, Scotland, and the United States by three different people that didn't even know each other, and yet the photographs are identical. I was uh, particularly honored in 1953 to have one of these ships land out there at our place. They landed for definite reasons because we had been in thought communication with them for a year and a half prior to that time. It's difficult for people to realize that this rostrum wouldn't have existed if somebody hadn't thought of it before it was made. Anything that you can look upon, this building, the tables, anything here was the result of somebody's thought, and thought is the creative force of all things. So in this research, we had received a number of communications from these people. At first, they only gave us little detailed data on events that were going to occur in order to verify themselves to us, to make us know that they knew the score of not only what was going on, but what was going to happen. The reason for these ships being here is because of these atomic detonations, which they have registered out in space and in their patrol ships, and they started appearing here right after the two bombs were jo uh, dropped in Japan. These people have demonstrated a science so far beyond ours that our scientists can't comprehend it. They travel from here to Venus in 42 minutes of our time in the carrier ships, in which the 2,200-foot carrier craft will carry 300 scout ships. They have no weapons. They have never had war in their history. Their science has been devoted entirely to the progression of their people. While we have had 177 years of peace in the last 2,000 years, the rest of it's all been war. These people have never made their appearance in great numbers before in any of our wars because they knew in a gunpowder war or bow and arrow war that it would soon end, there would be a lot of people killed and it would come to an end without any major damage. Nevertheless, now we have the means to destroy the civilization on this planet and the planet itself. Our government has admitted that we have enough bombs stored in this country alone to annihilate everybody on the planet through radioactivity. These people are here for our protection. They have stated flatly that they will not permit any device to be exploded that will destroy this planet or the inhabitants on it. The ring of asteroids between Mars and Jupiter that we see through our telescopes are pieces of a planet going around in the orbit that the planet originally traveled. These people have records of the time that planet was there. It was destroyed in nuclear tests just as the same as we're conducting today. And the resultant force of that and the cataclysmic eruption throughout the solar system, which they say runs just like a watch, if you gum up one gear, the whole works is affected. The civilization on Mars, three quarters of the population of Mars was killed in the concussion, the upheaval and everything that followed Mars never stabilized on its, or on its orbit again, nor on its axis. And they had to go out there and build a man-made satellite, which is our astronomers call the inner moon of Phobos. It's 1,500 miles off their surface, and it's nearly 10 miles in diameter. And our astronomy today will still uh, will admit to anyone that they don't know why that moon travels opposite to the rotation of the planets, while all the other moons travel with the rotation of the planets. 
and it also reflects more light than any other moon they've ever photographed. And that's because it's of its metallic surface. Our astronomers have made these commitments in the past that there is no life on other planets. This is the beginning of everything. I wonder how these little minds can conceive of God when they confine him to one speck of dust in the universe. This thing has reached a state now where we have a few motion pictures coming out. I don't know how many of you have seen this picture of UFO. Actual color motion pictures of 14 ships in formation, taken by a Navy man. The film has been analyzed by every technical laboratory in the military and stated flatly that it's not been tampered with or faked. There are two actual shots of flying saucers in that picture, plus data pertaining to the saucer buzz over Washington in 52, which we notified Washington was going to happen five days before it occurred. By registered letter, we told them that this was going to happen because these people told us they were going to do it and told us to, to send the information to Washington. It takes a lot of nerve to stick your neck out far enough to tell Washington that spaceships are going to buzz the capital. Nevertheless, the information they had given us for three years had proved accurate in every case, and we stuck our neck out far enough to tell Washington spaceships were going to buzz Washington. It's hard for the average person today who is wrapped up in the mundane things of making a living and making ends meet, paying his taxes and keeping his business going, to realize that these things are taking place. And yet on every hand, you can see the evidence decaying civilization the money system going out and appropriate billions where we used to appropriate a few millions, the expenditure of billions of dollars for things that you never know where it goes for, and there isn't that much money in existence. This cycle of change has to end sometime, someplace. It's going to end because these people are going to bring it to an end, but they're not going to do it by themselves. They are only going to observe the conditions and record them and prevent any bomb being exploded that would destroy this planet or its civilization. They said that in the event an atomic war starts, they will not interfere until the people start crying to God for help and then they'll put a stop to it. But they're going to let them get plenty well fed up with radiation disease and everything else before they make a move. The reason for that is in their laws and in the laws of the universe, they state man was given the right of free choice, every individual to make his own decision, every <laughs> civilization to decide their own course. And they are not going to violate that right of ours. They learned a long time ago to keep their nose in their own business. Unless conditions arrive at a point where their civilizations are affected or destroyed, they will interfere. They stated that they have three and a half million ships around their planet. They said they can take over this planet in any 15 minutes they want to take it over. And uh, our government knows they can do that, as well as the rest of them. The people that came in the ship out to our place on August the 24th, 1953, the man that woke me up, introduced himself, said his name was Soganda, he would like to show me his ship. I spent 20 years climbing in and out of airplanes. The man took me in and explained the various things uh, on the ship. I saw the method of power below the deck, the free energy motor running, the ship hovering there as stationary as it was on a concrete foundation despite the fact that a gusty wind was blowing. The fellow that introduced himself didn't introduce the other three men on the ship. However, they turned and smiled at me as I passed behind them. The man in the middle was controlling the ship. As I put my weight on the deck, when I went aboard it, I heard the tone of this humming engine change. And as Sol Gonda followed me onto the deck, it also changed again, indicating that they had to account for our different weights in order to maintain that hovering condition. As I said before, these ships have been patterned after planets. Now these ships, as they travel overhead, don't make a sound, because these fields generated around the ships won't permit sound to come out, and their engines aren't very noisy to begin with. They are not subject to any gravity outside of that to generate themselves, any more than this planet is. Everything inside of that force field is subject to its own gravity on its own deck. They can make right angle turns of 2,000 or 5,000 miles an hour and you don't even have to strap yourself in a seat to make the turn because the ship doesn't turn the people as our automobiles and airplanes do. The ship, every, the force that turns the ship turns every atom of the structure of the ship and the people in it at the same time. Relatively, there is no effect of centrifugal force manifest by the people in the ship 
relative to the ship. Now that science has found out that these things are, they are more reluctant than ever to reveal these things to the public because practically every scientific book today in the earth is obsolete. It would mean printing an entire new scientific concept of things. These things have not only entered the scientific field and the military field and the government field, but they've entered the religious field. Religion, as administered by the church, has maintained that Adam and Eve were the first creations. Everything in the Bible is there if it's interpreted right. And these people have interpreted this, this information for us. And it makes more sense than anything you ever read. The man we call Jesus is just as alive today as he was when he was here. These people have demonstrated beyond any possibility of a doubt that life is everlasting, from one lifespan to another under different conditions. Sometimes you have to take this grade over again because you didn't pass it. I asked them in particular that question, what do you have to do to pass this particular grade in life? And they said, all you have to do is conform to the golden rule and do all things in moderation and you've made the grave. Their concept of these things, of uh, a single one, or the creative spirit as they call God, they stated that the only difference between their religion and ours was that we talked about it and they lived it. Uh, they've brought many things to the surface that if we just stop and reason a little bit and think, and take the time to think, they make good old plain horse sense. Their technologies and science are so far ahead of our scientific concepts that we don't even know what they're, what they're doing. And they uh, further said that we didn't have to feel so bad about that because they know of people in space where they've explored there's a far above them that they can't understand it. So eternal life appears to be, as they said, a series of grades, just like going to school. You go through these grades to experience things and then go on to the other grades to experience greater things. So they've also brought to us a realization that death is not a termination of anything. It's only a change to a new condition. This in itself, the church should be anxious to bring to the people. Nevertheless, the church is under the same power of control in many cases, although there are true reverent uh, people in the church and in the teachings in the church. Nevertheless, the hierarchy of various branches of religion in the church have to conform to the principles that have been established through the years, and they refuse to change those principles. Nevertheless, in the next few years, they're going to have to change. They're going to have to reveal these things. These things are going to come out, come out in spite of authority, military, or the church. These people are here to stay. They're going to make more landings. They're going to be seen by whole cities, whole populations. They have carrier craft here from other solar systems that would stagger the imagination of our people. The one here outside our solar system from Arcturus, they said the ship is 120 miles long and 36 miles in diameter. And it's one of several hundred of ships they use primarily for exploration. But in this case, it's been brought here to bring a large number of other ships here. These sound like tales of fantasy. They said a few years ago in the aviation game, which I know better than any other business, that if you went to the speed of sound and broke the sound barrier, it'd tear the airplane to pieces. We have ships of Iraq Air Force right now that have flown better than twice the speed of sound and been landed by the pilots without any ill effects. One condition out there that occurred at Muroc I published in the paper. The counter never, the government never disputed this thing. One of these large carriers came over Muroc Air Base one day one of our rocket test airplanes that can't take off the ground has to be dropped from a bomber, was taken up, and then this particular day their project was to see how high they could go with it. At 89,000 feet, the pilot's instruments all went dead. And he was gone for three hours, yet he only had 10 minutes fuel, rocket fuel. He couldn't possibly stay in the air over 10 minutes with the fuel he had. And yet he was gone for three hours and landed back on Muroc Air Force Base and told his story of being picked up by some kind of a force which he couldn't describe, the airplane and the pilot taken inside of one of these big craft, in which he talked to the people for three hours, landed back on Muroc and told his story. As he left to go home after being examined by the military psychiatrist for hours, 
they phoned his wife and told her that he had been on a high altitude flight and he probably would be irrational not paying attention to what he said. I know her too. Nevertheless, they had to accept that something happened. He certainly didn't go outside of the gravity. He was gone three hours. They finally had to arrive at the conclusion that his story was true. They couldn't put any other conclusion on it. Especially after their radar stations had accounted for the fact that some large object was over Muroc Air Force Base that day. These things are going on right in our midst. And the citizens who are supposed to be the government of this nation are being kept in ignorance of it. That's the crime, that this great thing is taking place in our very presence and we are unaware of it, except for a few. These people have the means to converse from one of these ships with any individual they choose to put a beam on and talk to you just like you listen over a telephone. It's the same thing that occurred in the time of Jesus when Isaiah and Moses and all of these different people in the Bible heard voice of angels, they heard the voice from heaven, they heard uh, the voice of the Lord and different things like that. The book that we say we accept as the holy book has got all of these things in it. I've recently written a book using the Bible as verification of these things that are occurring. And if anybody can read that book and deny the facts in it, they also have to deny their Bible because the same facts are in the Bible. Isaiah tells you in Ezekiel of wheels within the wheels. What does that indicate? It indicates a mechanism. Voices from the sky, Moses running up into a cloud talking to the Lord. Those were real people. The only difference between our method of organization and theirs is that they classify their people by those names. Where we have general managers, superintendents, and president, they have God, Lord God, Lords, and titles like that. That's the thing the Bible tells you about. It's a story of these people in the skies. Of course, in those days, very few people could write. Very few of them even owned a donkey. They didn't know what a jet airplane or a balloon was. And when man came out of the sky, they had to picture him as something because they didn't know of anything that could fly in the sky but birds. So they drew pictures of man with wings on and called them angels because of the magnificent feats they performed in the presence of these multitudes. These people coming here today in these ships are the angels of the Bible. They are just as reverent, they understand life, and they live the laws. They don't talk about them. They haven't a church or a money system in their whole organization. But you never want to walk in the presence of finer people. You feel like a grandchild in the presence of his grandfather when you're around them. Because the very fact that they live these laws, they radiate the compassion and love that we like to know. Now, I have tried to cover this very roughly. I can't put eight years of research into a few minutes. Four on this ship were, uh, came to my eyebrows in height. I'm six foot tall and I would judge them to be about five foot seven. Any one of them could have put on our clothes and walked down the street and you wouldn't have known them from any of our people. Except they had a better physique, their muscles were outstanding, their, their physique was outstanding. They said they have no disease on any of their planets. They have quit disease a long time ago. Uh, I talked to two brain surgeons at my place, two of the top brain surgeons in this country. These two brain surgeons uh, stated that they had post-mortem the 16 bodies taken out of the ship north of Denver. That was way back, the one that Frank Scully wrote about, way back before security was ever clamped down. They said that from our own chart of brain tissue under a microscope, they have established a condition on this chart where they can determine the age take of any brain taken from any body, from a newborn baby to a person 100 years old. It doesn't go beyond 100 because they have so few cases beyond 100. But they said the brain tissue changes with the years. And they said from our own chart, which is based on zero to 100 years, they had to assume that the youngest of these bodies aboard these ships were 300 years old and the oldest was 700. Now that's physical evidence under a microscope. The one thing that the Air Force has harped on right straight through this thing is that we have no physical evidence. That's the biggest lie that was ever foisted on the American public. They have the physical evidence. We also have physical evidence. These things are going to come to light, and the Air Force is going to have to backtrack, because there have been a number of these contacts made, 
There have been several landings in South America. There have been several landings in France and Italy that we know of, probably in all the other countries. But we know of several people in this country that have contacted these ships, talked to the people aboard them, and gone aboard the ships. In every case, the press has tried to twist the stories of these people to make it seem that they are just a little bit cracked. Dan Fry rode one of these craft from White Sands to New York and back in 30 minutes. They get Dan Fry from Aerojet in the zoo to come up there and make those adjustments because he's the technician with the know-how to set the gyro pilots of the rocket to go straight up. And yet the press implies that the man's a little bit screwy. He's the head of uh, Crescent Engineering down El Monte now and uh, also a consulting engineer for Aerojet yet but he has produced two or three devices which he has no competitor on. They are strictly things, little uh, transitors and so forth, that the people he contacted told him how to make, much better than anything we manufacture. He has no com competition. One of them's a little electrical device that you can set next to any shaft that's rotating and it'll give you the exact RPMs per minute without any connection with the shaft. Another one has a pump that'll pump acid without having any moving part in the acid in the pipe the acid is being pumped through, pumping the fluid by induction. This story is going to get out in spite of anything. It's the greatest thing, as I say, since the birth of Christ. So these people are people in another life level, the same as uh, college students to grade school kids. Well, normally they don't speak uh, any language. They have a basis of thought, which they call the Solex Mall, or the solar tongue, and they communicate meanings by thought. Now they have uh, passed down in a number of families the ability to speak. If one particular family talks English, it'll be passed down as English to the succeeding generations. The man who talked to me spoke as good of English as Ronald Coleman, much better than I speak. And the three that didn't talk to me couldn't utter a sound, not even if you hit them, they couldn't even grunt, because they have their vocal cords are dormant. Where they have the ability to think and not talk, we have the ability to talk and not think. So it's uh, just to write about faith. Mostly the reason our people can't think is because they never have time to think. Our system doesn't permit us to think. We're going like a racehorse from morning to night and maybe the wife running along beside us in some other position in order to meet the burdens of living. These things are something that have to be gone into and the system must change, there's no question. This money system is on a critical point of either collapse or total expansion or inflation. The hydrogen condition definitely is going to have to come to some sort of a stop. It's either going to have to cease or blow the works up. And these people said they wouldn't permit that to happen. So uh, we're living in a critical time in more ways than one. They refer to what we call God as the creative spirit or the single one. And uh, uh, their interpretation of people like themselves and like us uh, are, they say, we are instruments of this creator's doings. In other words, he can't manifest anything except through man who he gave dominion over all things and then rested and left the works up to us. So uh, their basic explanation of these things is... Uh, brought an understanding that we are in this life grade and they are in another one higher above us. And when we die, rather than mourning the death, we should be tickled to death if somebody died because uh, it's evidence of uh, termination of this grade. They said that death among their people is celebrated like we celebrate if one of our kids graduates from grade school to high school. They said, we celebrate a, a graduation down here from one grade to another in school, but we don't celebrate it in life. And uh, they have no mourning. Actually, if we believe in an infinite father, an infinite force, and a deity greater than ourselves, it looks kind of stupid to go out here and ball because God took somebody from us. It's the same as, uh, to me, it's a sacrilege to cry over it. I mean, after all, well, that's uh, business be above and beyond us. We didn't have anything to say about getting here, so why, how, why should we have anything to say about leaving?